Welcome back to our second Arduino lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be making two more circuits that use the Arduino. In our first one, we're going to be creating a circuit that fades an LED. Let's get started by creating a new circuit. Now that we've created a blank template, we're going to go to Components and select Starters Arduino. And we're going to select the Arduino Fade circuit here. We're going to click to place it on the screen. Now that we have our circuit built, let's look at the code that's going to run to see how it's going to work. Once again, we have a title block, and then we have two new features in this code. We have loops. So what these loops do is they count up by a certain increment, and in this case, over a certain range. And in this case, it's counting from 0 to 255 in intervals of 5. And once it, once it reaches 255, the loop will end. Similarly, in this one, it's counting down, so it's starting at 255 down to 0. Then, for the first loop, it's going to set the pin to the brightness, which is the count that's increasing in the first loop and decreasing in the second one. And then it has a wait feature once again. Now that we understand the code, let's see how the circuit actually works. So let's close the code and start simulation. So the LED gets brighter and then it gets darker. And this keeps happening over and over again, just as we expected. So we can see that the circuit's working correctly, but let's see how we can change it. So let's stop the simulation and go back to the code. Let's say we wanted the LED to change the brightness more quickly. We can do this pretty easily by changing how the loops are counting. So instead of counting up by five, let's go to 10 for both of these. Now. Let's start the simulation. You can see now that the light is fading a lot quicker than it was before. Let's see if we can make it go even faster. Let's change the count up to 50. Now let's start the simulation. We can see it's basically blinking on and off now. So not only can we change the rate at which the LED blinks, we can also change how bright and how dark it gets. So let's stop the simulation again and go back to the code. We change this back to its original value of 5. Then we can let's look at the range of the loop. So it, right now it's going from 0 to 255. Let's see what happens if we instead start at 100 and go to 255. And we go from 255 back down to 100. If we close the code and start the simulation, you can see the LED fades, but it doesn't go quite as dark anymore. Let's see what else we can change. Let's say we change it instead of 255. Let's go from 0 to 150 and back down from 150 to 0. You can see the LED does not get as bright now. From this circuit, we've learned a couple of new tools. One, we've learned how we can vary the brightness of an LED. And this can be used for other things, such as a motor to control the speed. But we've also learned how to use loops in our code, and this is going to be really important for future circuits. Now, let's move on to our second circuit. In this circuit, we're going to use an Arduino once again to control an LED using a button. This is very similar to the circuit we built in the first lesson, which uses a switch to control an LED. However, in this case, with the Arduino, we'll be able to actually program this instead of using physical components. So let's start by going to the Components Basic tab here and switch to Starters Arduino. Then we'll select the button circuit here and we'll place it on the screen by clicking. And then we'll go to the Basic um, Components tab and select an LED and place it right here. Then we'll select a resistor. Then to wire the circuit, we're going to connect the anode of the LED, which is on the right side, to the top of the resistor and click. And we're going to wire that to pin 11. Next, we're going to connect the cathode to ground. We can also change the color of these wires by clicking up here and selecting black for ground. And we can change this to be red for positive. Now that the entire circuit is built, let's look at all the connections. First, we have our button that has one pin connected to ground and another pin connected to 5 volts. Then, on the top of it, we have a connection to pin 2, which is a digital pin. This will allow us to read in a value and use it in our code. We also have the LED connected to pin 11, which will provide the power to the LED. 
and we have another connection to ground. Now that we have all our connections, let's look at the code. We can see here that first we're setting a button state to read a digital pin. What this is saying is that pin 2, we're going to act as if it's an input, and we're going to read in the value, whether it's a 0 if it's off, or a 1 if it's on. Then, we have an if statement, and this is checking to see if the button is pressed. So if the button is pressed, or it's in the high state, then we're going to turn on a built-in LED by setting it to high. Otherwise, if the button is not on, we're going to turn the built-in LED off. Let's see how this works. So we'll start the simulation. And what we expect is that the light by this L is going to turn on when we press the button. So we can see it's on right now, and when we release the button, it turns off. Now, we want this LED to turn on instead of the built-in LED. So let's stop the simulation and look at the code. So the line that changes, that turns on the built-in LED is this line right here and this line right here. So let's change these. Let's just we'll drag them, and we're just going to drag them to the garbage can in the bottom right. Now, we need to set, find a piece of code that sets pin 11 to high or low to turn on the LED or turn it off. So right here, we see an option, set pin 0 to high. So let's drag this and place it right underneath this comment. And we'll change this so that it's set to pin 11. So we'll turn on pin 11 if the button is pressed. But what happens when we want to turn off the LED? So we'll grab the same block we'll put it underneath the other comment. We'll change this to pin 11 again, and we'll change it to low so that it will turn off the LED when the button is not pressed. Now that we have our code assembled, let's test it. So we'll close the code and we'll start the simulation. Now when we press this button, the LED should turn on. We press it and there we go, it's on, and we release, it turns off. On and off. But there's still other changes that we can make. Let's say we wanted the LED to be on when the button is not pressed. So we'll just change this from high to low, and we'll start the simulation again. Now the LED is on and the button is not pressed, but then when we press the button, it turns off. And now it's back on again. Now that we have this circuit built, we've completed lesson two. And from lesson two, we've learned two more important building blocks. First, we learned how we can control the input to an LED using a variable input. We also learned how we can input a signal such as a button. And we also learned some important programming tools such as a loop as well as an if statement. We'll use all four of these things in our final project which will be in lesson three.